Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. This is Elder Maxwell Cotton coming to you with words of encouragement. I won't be on long tonight. Just quick word, quick word. Amen. First, I want to thank God for God. I want to give honor to God who is indeed the head of my life. To Jesus Christ, the Son, to the Holy Ghost, our Comforter. I do also honor my pastor and my overseer, my assistant pastor, and all those who work alongside my pastor and assistant pastor. Thank God for all the ministers of the gospel, all, all my family, all my church family, my natural family. I praise and I thank God for my special friend. Thank God for her. Amen. I know she's watching it. She'll be watching later or she's watching now. Thank God for her. Amen. I do thank God for all those who are praying for me, who have prayed for me. I appreciate you so, so very much. Listen, God heard and answered your prayers. I want to let you know God heard and answered your prayers. And I want to say I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Amen. The devil tried, but he was denied. Amen. Quick word. Amen. Go with me to your Bibles to Matthew the 6th chapter. Matthew 6, chapter, verse 25 through 34. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. That's where we're going to be at tonight. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Amen. Matthew 6, verse number 25. Starting at verse number 25, it reads as follows. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought, of your life, what shall ye eat, or what shall ye drink? Nor yet for your body, what shall ye put on? Is not life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. 26. Behold the fowls of the air. They neither sow, nor do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much more valuable than they? Which of you can by take by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? Now, if now why take ye thought of the raiment? Verse twenty eight. Now, why take ye thought of the raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. They how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought by saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. 33, but if ye seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought of its own the things of itself, sufficient unto the days of the evil thereof. Amen. Topic for tonight. The cure for anxiety. The cure for anxiety. Let us pray. Father God, it's preaching time. Hide me behind the cross, O oh God. Let Maxwell decrease that you may increase. O oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The cure for anxiety. We're going to dissect these scriptures text one by one. I'm going to get on out your way if the Lord says the same. Verse 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for or your life. What shall ye eat? What shall ye drink? Nor your body, what shall ye put on? Is not life more than meat? And the body more than raiment? Jesus reasons with his followers to help them keep perspective. Some things are more important than others. Your life and body are more important than things 
And no one should sacrifice their life and their body simply to acquire more things. But too many do. Okay. Somebody said, what you talking about? I'm glad you asked. Sometimes people work and worry to acquire things and they ruin their mental and physical health, their relationships with God and with others. Uh-oh. They show, they show their lack of trust in God as their Heavenly Father in His loving desire to give His children all they need. Jesus has already taught them to pray for God to give them their daily bread or to meet their needs. His children need to trust God as they pray to God as their Heavenly Father. Okay. Verse 26 says, Behold the fowls of the air. They neither sow, nor do they reap, nor do they gather into the rock, to the barns. Yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more better than they? The Bible teaches that if we will not work, we will not eat. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 Because of the many because of the many uncertainties uncertainties in this world Jesus knows we need good reasons not to worry. He does not urge he does not argue against our need to work, save, and prepare for the future as he enables. We are people created in the image of God. And God did a great work in creating the world. Jesus declared, My Father is still working, and I also am working. John five seventeen. We need to work and not worry. Leave the ultimate results to our Father in Jesus who is still working. As created in God's images, as created in God's image, we are great we are of greater value than the creatures God also cares about and we meet their needs. If we cannot work, God will find a way to meet our real needs. Just as he cares for the birds who do some work for God and themselves in their own way created by God. Verse number 27 says, Which of you can take thought can add one cubit to its stature? We know from medical research that worry can actually bring illness to someone or even sh and even shorten their life. Jesus went to his Father to prepare a home for us in heaven. John 14, verse 3. Hmm. So even if we do suffer and die physically, even if we are persecuted and murdered, just as those who trust in Jesus Christ and the Lord and Savior will continue to to live with him and go to a better and go to the place in heaven that he has prepared for them. Okay, verse number twenty-eight. So why take you thought of the cold? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. In many places, people need basic clothing necessities. Some needs coats. For the winter and they cannot afford. In other places people worry about wearing the latest clothing styles for work, school, or for their professional appearance. How we appear to God in our heart means more than means more to God than whether or not we're wearing the most expensive or stylish clothing. Wearing the right robe of, of righteousness giving to those who follow Jesus will make an eternal difference. Isaiah 61 and 10 and Revelations 7, 9 through 14. You can read it for yourself at your own time. One of those responsibilities of those who follow Jesus Christ is to help the needy. God helps them find clothing through his people. Mm. 
Oh, it's mighty quiet up in here. Okay, let me go ahead and move on. Let me put a pin right there. You know you got some clothes that you ain't worn in years? Why don't you give them away? So I hear, I hear somebody saying, I may wear it later on. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let me move on from that before I get in trouble. Number twenty, Verse number 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. God, the creator of all through Jesus Christ, make all things beautiful. Make all things beautiful. The external beauty of a lily surpasses the glory of any clothing the richest person may ever wear. And no doubt King Solomon and his court dressed more richly than any of their time. Often in the internal beauty... Often the internal beauty of a righteous person far surpasses their external beauty. For God makes them righteous through Jesus Christ. When we keep things in perspective, it is better to be in a right relationship with God who can make us beautiful on the inside than worry about whether or not we have the in-style clothing. Unhappily, many in many places, Obeying Jesus Christ is not in style, but seeking the most stylish clothing is anxiously pursued. That's something to think about. Verse number 30. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more close you, O ye of little faith? God wants his children to be people of faith. God will fit us for heaven and be with us in this life through every situation. The concerns of this world can quickly turn our eyes from Jesus Christ and from seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus truly wants us to keep everything in perspective. As we can see on down, as we can read on down a little bit further in 33, we'll see what we, we'll see exactly what he's talking about. 31. Therefore take no thought by saying what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we be called? Have faith in God. As revealed in the Bible, trusting, trusting in his love and care and that he always does what is best for all concerned. Pray for God. Hmm? Pray for. Pray for God to meet all your needs. As Jesus taught in the Lord's Prayer and in his parables. Faith in God. Trust in the word of God, the Bible and prayer in Jesus name are three ways to overcome worry. As faithful followers of Jesus Christ, we are the children of God and He will care for us as our Heavenly Father. 32. For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. At this point in Jesus' sermon on the mount and in His ministries, most Gentiles did not love did not know, love, or follow the true God, but followed their idols instead. Probably Canaanites, Greek, Romans, or Persians' idols. But most unbelievers, or those who do not know the true God yet, are known to strive for the things of this world. Some strive for money, and what money can buy, or they seek power to move ahead of others. Or to take from others. God knows what we truly need. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. And as children of God. We know the truth about God. We do his work in his way. And he will supply all of our needs. Can I get an amen? Verse number 33. 
this is what I was talking about back in the rest number 30. Here's the answer. But ye seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As people who love God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our goals must include living under the kingship or lordship of our God, our Father, of God our Father, at all times. We recognize that the nation we live in is subject to the rules, subject to the rules of God's kingdom as revealed in the Bible. Whether or not our country's rulers or, or other subjects know this or not. As the, as the Old Testament shows, when a nation lives contrary to the commandments of God, the nation will suffer the consequences. Mm. God's moral laws are just as reliable as God's physical laws. The followers of Jesus need to live touch, need to live Consciously, yes. <laughs> Need to live consciously with this conviction. Uh, with this conviction. Mm. Let me say that again. The followers of Jesus need to live consciously with this conviction about God's authority over all. Mm. My God. As we seek to live right in the power of Jesus gives us, God will give us what we need to do His will and prepare us for spending eternity with God and all who love Him. Mm. 34, last verse. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought in things of itself. Sufficient. Until the days of the evil thereof. Jesus told people to live one day at a time. When he taught in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And he taught the, sa and he taught the same thing here. His teaching does not mean that we, will not, that we should not prepare for the future. As God enables us. As we prepare for what might happen. Have emergency preparedness plans. And so on. Jesus tells us not to worry about the future. But trust in God. We have. We have enough daily concerns. Without worrying about the many things. That may never happen. We need to do what God wants us to do each day. And trust in God. And trust the future, our Heavenly Father, King of the Universe, who cares for us. So, in closing, what is the cure, the cure for anxiety? The cure in, for anxiety, I'm glad you asked. The cure for anxiety is Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. If you seek God first, he'll lay down everything straight. Everything will be all right. If you seek God first, everything else shall be added. Don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Don't worry about that. Listen, God already knows. He knows. So what you worry about it for? And guess what? He's already taken care of it. So why are you worried about something if it's already taken care of? The cure for anxiety, Matthew 6, 33. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you is my prayer. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this word that you've given me to give to the people. Father God, I pray that the word will touch somebody. I pray that the word will bless somebody. Oh God, I pray that the word will encourage somebody. Oh God, not to fear and don't lose their faith. In Jesus' name, oh God, 
shield and protect those that are watching, those that are listening, wherever they may be, O oh God. Shield and protect the praise you will bless them, continue to bless them, look down on them, in Jesus' name I pray. O oh God, bless their families, O oh God. O oh God, we need you, O oh God. This world needs you, O oh God. We're living in the last days, O oh God. Father God, be with us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Father God, we pray for our unsaved loved ones, O oh God. Let them get a chance to know you before it's too late, O oh God. O oh God, we thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. Is my prayer. Until next time. God bless you all.